Hi guys, just a quick video on a concept that I touched on in the previous video, which was choking flow. So previously we looked at an example on a change in bed elevation and we were given an initial depth Y1, which helped us to find Y2. And how we did that was by finding E1 and E2 in the specific energy equation and the Bernoulli equation. But what we didn't consider was whether the E2 we found was still on the specific energy curve. Um, and the question we've got to ask is whether or not E2 is greater than EC. Now, in the question that we previously covered on bed elevation, E2 was greater than EC. We, we took that um, to be the case, um, but it's not necessarily the case. Uh, now we're going to consider what happens when E2 is less than EC. In the case where E2 is less than EC, so this was uh, the uh, specific energy curve from the previous video. Um, and you can see that our ET was greater than EC. But for this case, when we've got a large delta Z, which is the cause for an E2 less than EC, um, we have to account for this. And we call this, um, this uh, situation where E2 is less than EC a choking flow. Clearly, there are no points um, for E2 less than EC that correspond to a value for Y on the curve because it's just it's completely off the curve, off the graph, so that doesn't have a y, y value. What happens here is that the flow adjusts so that it fits on the specific energy curve while maintaining a difference of delta Z between E1 and E2. So essentially all you'll have to do is shift E2 and E1 by the same amount until E2 lies on the critical point. So what we're doing here is we're maintaining that delta Z. Um, we've got E1 and E2 at that distance and we're shifting that E2 until it becomes EC. E1 is shifted the same amount. So it'll end up looking like this here. The dotted lines were our original positions and it shifts up. So our upstream value uh, would have where 